Welcome to the Inflow Podcast. I am your host, Michelle Bosch. I see a gapping hole across society that focuses on the outer work and forgets about the inner work, when what we really need is to bridge the gap between prosperity and spirituality to live a life in flow with inflows of light, inflows of cash, inflows of creativity, inflows of grace in our lives. Each week, join me for powerful messages and interviews that will leave you inspired and ready to step into flow in your higher work. So now, let's go. Welcome to the Inflow Podcast. I'm your host, Michelle Bosch. Excited to have you all with me today again on the 100 and one episode of the Inflow Podcast. Last week, I celebrated 100 episodes of coming to you every single week for the last couple of years, bringing you amazing women, thought leaders across different industries, um, you know, solo episodes, sharing, you know, strategies um, that have made us money that have helped in some way, shape or form, uh, you know, uh, get to the level of success as we each personally have defined success and also how we cultivate ease, grace in our lives. We have all, you know, most of the ladies that I have brought here have had not just, you know, uh, businesses in the seven or multiple uh, seven or even eight figure uh, level, but they are also moms. They're also, you know, wives and um and I've learned so much from them. Um, I know that I had extended a podcast challenge. If you reviewed the podcast, if you um, went ahead and took screenshots of your written review, if you took screenshots of you sharing it on social media, uh, you are still eligible over the next couple of weeks. I'm going to be collecting basically those uh, that, you know, that come in and, um, and you're going to be basically participating in a raffle to win a home study course of our land profit generator method, as well as a one hour coaching session with me. And uh, so thank you for the ones that have already submitted. If you haven't yet, go ahead and leave a written review on uh, iTunes or Android or, or, or Spotify, wherever it is that you, um, that you listen to the podcast. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. It helps me, uh, you know, get through the ranks slowly, mastering my craft every single day, coming up here, showing up. And, um, and, um, and, and that allows me to basically get my message out to many more ladies. Um, so if there's actually a lady, a special lady, um, in your life that you would like to share the podcast with, uh, please go ahead and share it as well. Thank you so much. So today, uh, I wanted, we are actually wrapping up a nine day masterclass. It's been like a land profit masterclass palooza is what I call it. And, um, and I've been reading over the last few days, actually over the weekend, a book that was recommended to me by a friend in a, in another group, uh, that I belong to a mastermind where I also invest, you know, quite a bit of money to be a part of, um, in, in order to always keep, uh, expanding possibilities, pushing boundaries of what's possible. And, uh, really, uh, it's as a result of me having a lifetime commitment to growth and continued, uh, learning, you know, as I, um, in my leadership abilities and in my ability to not just perform within real estate, but in any business really, um, that I set myself, uh, for. And, um, and so this book that I've been reading is called, um, Extreme Ownership. And it is, uh, basically it's, it's, it says, uh, it's how us Navy SEALs lead and win. And it's a bestseller. I was recommended by someone in that other group, um, to read it. And, um, and, and so today I really want to talk to you guys about, because as I was reading this book, it really reminded me of what a lot of us had to go through, um, in, amidst, you know, in the middle of the uncertainty that we had last year, we're about, about a year right now, a one year anniversary to this incredibly big, big black swan event that happened, which is a pandemic, uh, that affected pretty much all industries, all businesses, all entrepreneurs. And, um, and, and we didn't expect it, you know, and, and, um, and as I was reading this, you know, he describes, you know, that leadership is, is a lot about an operating, you know, a unit in, in the military, such as the Navy SEALs, um, you know, when you're a leader of such a unit that you really have to constantly be navigating chaos, 
uncertainty and that um, and that you never know, you know, when that is going to come, when change is going to come, where when chaos is going to come, when you're going to be shot, who's going to be your weakest link, you know, uh, who who's shooting you, where is it coming from? Um, and, 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 and pretty much, you know, are, are your men down? Are they, are they in pain? Um, and, and it, and it's a constant assessing and reassessing of a situation in order for you to move forward and, um, and be able to make quick decisions, implement, execute, and with not a whole lot of information, you know, in the picture, and, uh, and you have to basically rely on the business acumen of, you know, whatever it is that you have done or the successes that you've done or the failures that you've, you know, that you've learned from in the past. And, um, and that is, you know, so, so true. That's exactly what we experienced last year. You know, we, we actually got blessed in the land flipping business that, you know, COVID actually brought an explosion uh, in the buyers, you know, that are wanting to buy land, whether it be infill lots, path of growth lots, or um, recreational land, because all of a sudden, you know, everyone found themselves at, you know, at home working virtually, and this virtual type of work is not going to go away, actually, right now, one year after, and as vaccines are being rolled out, people are still have already created a habit of working from home, staying at home, but things will continue to change in one, you know, in one way or the other, that is for sure. And so, and so we as leaders need to be, need to be prepared, need to be prepared uh, on, on, on always looking for ways to expand our business skills and our business acumen, because that those capabilities and that confidence that comes from having those skills that translate to whatever situation that you're going through are the ones that you can really, you know, that can really help you create income and pivot quickly, no matter what's happening. And, um, you know, more than likely, a lot of people out there, you know, follow uh, the shiny pennies of tactics, but really do not uh, focus on learning timeless business principles, timeless business principles um, in, in skills like sales, you know, like marketing, like online sales, like actually online sales is constantly, you know, changing, regardless of whether there's a black swan event or an economic downturn or not. Um, and, 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 and you are basically using those business skills to not just successfully flip land, but successfully engage in any business. You know, if you're able to sell a piece of land, you're going to be able to sell anything. If you can sell, you know, one of our master coaches is actually a, um, used to be a, uh, a salesperson for, for four trucks. And he's like, if I can sell a truck, you know, to anyone, which is incredibly hard, I can, you know, I can sell any piece of land to anyone. And, and that's because that's a skill set. That's a business skill that directly translates to no matter what business or what product or service you're trying to sell. And so, and, and so it's so important to, to basically rely on that and to quickly think basically through if you're in a situation where it feels like, you know, there's a quicksand and you're moving in quicksand and everything is moving very rapidly, you know, there's a few steps that you can do in order to move forward and execute and basically not waste time and, and adjust um, so that you can move forward regardless of what's happening. And the very was first thing that I'm, I'm going to say that I, you know, happened for me last year and every single time I'm basically faced with challenges and faced with uncertainty and chaos and um, in my life is I evaluate what is the highest priority problem? What is the highest priority problem? Number one. Number two, I try to lay out as simply as possible and as clear as possible and concise as possible, you know, what is it that myself and my team need to do about that priority. Like, what is it that we need to do? And we need to do it. And I need to basically communicate that in a very simple and concise way so that the entire organization, the entire team, or your VA, or your family, whatever it is, whoever your team is right now, can move basically swiftly, quickly, 
and, uh, and, and, and where you're going to basically get the biggest bang for your buck. So that was number two. Number three, you know, you want to um, also seek the input of others. Every single person, you know, is going to have a different vantage point and a different solution. And so you as a leader, you would need to basically solicit the, you know, the possible solutions that can come from your team as well. So that's super, super important. You know, when we, uh, for example, in our coaching business, you know, we had to deliver within a couple of weeks of a major shutdown happening in the entire country. We had to deliver, deliver what was supposed to be a live event. And we immediately, uh, you know, uh, realized that that was the number one priority was to figure out whether we were going to um deliver on that refund, you know, every single of our clients that, you know, had already had even made travel arrangements to come see us and so on and so forth. Or are we going to find, or were we going to find a solution to, to delivering still on our promise and bringing not just equal value, but if possible, even a higher value than what they would have gotten if they would have flown, you know, personally into Phoenix. And, um, and I remember us going to the team and the team saying, you know, well, this is the, you know, we decided that was the highest priority. I can, we communicated that simply and concisely. And then we decided, you know, we actually solicited from the group, from the team, you know, how can we go about best do that in the time frame that we have? And how can we communicate that to our clients as well? So, so that is an example that I'm giving you, but basically those are three things. And then as things continue to change, so, so, so important that even though you have set a priority, you know, that you don't get basically stuck in that priority because as conditions change and you are faced with uncertainty, what's going to happen is that the priorities are going to shift as well. And so every single one in, you know, uh, in your team or whether you're a solo person, you know, flipping land alone, uh, you're going to have to basically assess the situation at every single, you know, at every single moment, say, for example, you have a closing that is going south where, you know, your seller is, uh, is, uh, is basically ghosting you or a buyer is ghosting you. You're going to, you're going to have to, if, if you're coming to a point where, you know, you are about to have a contract that is going to expire and you're not able to extend with the seller, you're going to have to basically very quickly think on your feet as far as, okay, is this my highest priority right now? If I have, you know, these contracts that are still have three months to go and this, and this one only has three weeks to go. And I just got, you know, my buyer just flaked out, you know, that becomes your, your highest priority. And then, but eventually, you know, as you move that ball forward, other priorities are going to come. And so it's a constant reevaluation of what is the priority right now, you know, what is the effort that needs to be done and by whom? And can I communicate this simply and clearly? And can I get actually input on how we can best, if you do have a team, how I can best do this? Or if you do have a coach, how can I best approach this? That would be the number one, um, you know, uh, I would say go to if you're listening to this and you're part of our coaching program, it would be the very first uh, to go resource uh, that I would, you know, give you was to go ahead and contact your master coach, contact your accountability coach, and um, and figure out basically and have them help you prioritize, uh, you know, all the things or all the balls that you have going on. But uh, but yeah, so so I want you, if you're listening to this, to apply these steps. If you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling like you're in the middle of chaos in the middle of, you know, in the middle of quicksand, in, in the middle of things shifting underneath you. And, um, and you don't know, and you feel a little bit overwhelmed, uh, know that that happens to everyone. Everyone, I think, went through something, you know, incredibly um, similar in their lives, not just during a pandemic, but on everyday business, on everyday life. And uh, that that is a, you know, a, a very simple approach to, you know, continue moving forward, to continue resting in the strength of the skills that you already have, but also recognize and realize that, you know, as the landscape in business changes, as a market in real estate changes, that you need to continue to invest in timeless business principles that are going to give you the business skills that you're going to need in order to be able to basically turn, you know, shitty situations 
into hundreds and thousands of dollars in growth and, and, and that will carry you basically for the rest of your life in other businesses and other asset classes and other types of investments. Um, and so if you're listening to this and you were part of the masterclass, are still looking, you know, or thinking about joining our coaching program, you can always go to landcoaching.com. Uh, we have actually uh, closed enrollment, but if you want to get on a waiting list or talk to someone about uh, whether it is a fit for you, uh, please go ahead and do so. And you can go to www.landcoaching.com um, and you can talk to one of our team members there. So, um, so guys, um, it was, it's, it's a quick one, it's a short one. It's, it's basically, that's what I wanted to bring to you, you know, as I, as I was reading, you know, this book from the Navy SEALs, you know, where they're talking about, you know, how, um, they, they, they basically, uh, very often in combat find themselves in the exact same situation. And it was, it was interesting to see that of course, in military lingo, you know, and, and so on and so forth, they're describing the exact same process of, you know, identifying the highest priority, communicating, you know, to the team, what the effort is going to be or what we're going to do in a very simple way about that priority, soliciting also from the team any new input, and constantly reassessing, you know, how things change so that if priorities shift, that everyone knows and, and, and can tackle those as, as a team together, you know, and that's how basically, you know, in, in, in combat that are able to execute and, um, and, and recognize that indecision and paralysis analysis is not what's going to get you out of a sticky situation, that it's actually going through these four steps and, um, and, and being comfortable with being uncomfortable sh for short periods of time and, um, and, and executing and moving forward regardless, you know, making those decisions swiftly, gathering, yes, the information, yes, gathering the data that you need, but you are never going to have the whole picture, you know, you're going to have to, at some point, stop the, the, the fact finding, stop the gathering of, you know, of information, stop the research and just move forward and just go, 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 go. So, um, so with that, um, thank you so, so very much for joining me, uh, on this, uh, episode of inflow. Again, if you would like to be, uh, eligible to participate in a raffle of the land profit generator, uh, method home study course, um, and also be eligible to win a one hour coaching session with me, uh, you need to leave me a written review wherever it is that you listen. If you're on iTunes, go ahead and, you know, leave a written review there. Post also, uh, you know, a, um, a screenshot perhaps of the podcast on, from your phone and post it on and, and share it with others on social media, maybe on your stories, on a post and so on and so forth and send me a screenshot or tag me better yet and uh, I can make sure that you get, you know, that you're included. And in a few weeks time here towards the end of April, I will go ahead and announce who will be the winner. Um, and um, with that, thank you so much for, like I said, showing up. We're 101 episodes in now and uh, nothing's stopping me now. And the sky's the limit. I am excited to bring another 100 in, you know, or 99 more episodes um, to you all uh, where I'm going to be bringing, you know, amazing women. We have in the pipeline some uh, some powerhouses, you know, uh, like Kara Golden, uh, the founder of Hint, who's going to be with us uh, sometime in April, and a few other amazing, magnificent women from the real estate space and from other industries. Because I love learning from, you know, uh, from what, other, what others are doing successfully and how I can see and basically tie those things into what we're doing in our industry within real estate so that we can continue to innovate and, and create new things, new models, uh, and new ways of doing things, you know, that can get us to a results faster, quicker, easier. Um, and ideally, I want to share those with you so that you can replicate our success as well. Uh, thank you so much. And I will see you at the next episode, or I will be talking to you, you know, if you're listening to this and you're not watching the video, the next episode of the Inflow Podcast. Thank you so much. And until the next one, bye-bye. I hope this episode left you feeling inspired and ready to get inflows of cash, inflows of light, and inflows of faith in your life. I welcome your reviews on iTunes. Please leave me a review and help me create an amazing community of women in flow. Thank you, as always, for sharing your voice by going to michellebosch.com 
and joining the conversation about this show. And while you're there, grab a copy of my 10 Commandments to Living a Life in Flow. You can also follow me on Facebook at Michelle Bosch and on Instagram at Michelle Bosch Official. Thank you very much and until the next one.